In this video, Emma heads out to Tulangi State Forest with her brand new boyfriend in his Volkswagen Amarok and she rolls it. Ah, I did ask her, how did that go? She said, we're still together. So hey, they sorted it out. But anyway, let's unpack this rollover and work out some of the things we can learn or and I think about ways we could have tackled this situation so we didn't have the rollover. I'm all for all people going four-wheel driving. Young, old, girls, boys, I don't care. Just get out there and enjoy the outdoors with your four-wheel drive. As far as I'm concerned, it's a great family recreation and it's great for our well-being and it's great for people. Now, big kudos to Emma for getting out there and having a go and for being prepared to share this with all of us so that we can learn from it. So let's hook into the video. I'm just gonna roll you through the whole footage as it is at the moment, and then we'll start to unpack it. Now, excuse, sorry for the quality of the videos. Obviously these were phone videos, dash cam footage. It is what it is, but I'm sure you'll get the idea. Give it a little bit of bunty. Put your foot down. Get up it. As soon as she does, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> anyway, she doesn't get hurt, so I'm laughing at it. Okay, let's watch the second video we have, which is from a dash cam footage angle. Oh my god. Naturally, everybody's concerned about Emma and wanting to make sure she's okay. But I'm just letting you watch this through. I want you to start thinking about what could have been done differently. Let us know in the comments. Make some comments about what you're seeing going on in that video. Okay, let's go to the beginning and start unpacking this. So let's start at the front of the first video and listen carefully to something that Emma says. I don't use that sort of language, so I won't repeat what she said. But she do then says, I don't trust you guys. She's never been four wheel driving before. She's in clay country, it's slippery. And she's got two guys confidently telling her what to do. She's actually made the correct read on the situation of like, I don't feel like this is going to work. One of the things when we have a new person new to four wheel driving, and I am guilty of this, I have so much understanding and experience of what's going on. I actually have trouble communicating that to somebody who is new to the, to the sport. And I have to intentionally and very intentionally unpack an, uh, my thought process, my intuitive muscle memory type thought process and unpack it. And that's what I'm doing for you now is I'm trying to unpack it and get into my head and go, okay, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm experiencing, this is what's going on. How can I help communicate that? And in this situation, we've got a very interesting dynamic. We've got people who are trying to prove themselves because it's a new relationship. Now, um, I don't think Emma is trying to prove herself. I don't find that the ladies generally are trying to prove themselves, but us blokes, we're wanting to be the man. Hey, you'll be right, you just do what I tell you and you'll be right. And we have a real tendency to do that. And I, I try to fight that. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm right about it, I get it right, but I do try to fight that resistance to always be the, the she'll be right, mate, yeah, and you just do what I tell you to do. And, you know, we need to be aware of that as men um, because, you know, of that, that tendency. So that's going on. It's just an interesting dynamic to consider in this video. All right, let's, let's just keep playing this through. Just, just try and put a bit of bunty on. So she actually says, if I drive forward, I'm going to fall. And she's exactly right. This is where we have the whole conversation about give it some power on and, and we'll unpack 
some thinking around that in a second. Put a bit of bouncy on top. Just a little bit. Just give it a bit of gas. Because you've got to get up. It's going to slip all the way. Yeah. yeah, and just push your foot down. Stop, stop, stop! <laughs> and over it goes. <laughs> Every time I watch the video, I just giggle at the whole, just give it some bunty, get up it. And the moment you do, it's like, stop, stop, stop. Once you've got momentum in a vehicle on clay, it is really hard to control it. Now there's definitely times where momentum is a, is a key element to, to clay driving and slippery surface driving, but you really want to know what's going to happen. Otherwise, slow and steady and really walk it through. All right, let's cross over to the dash cam footage and I'm going to start unpacking some ideas that I think could have worked to get them through this situation without a vehicle rollover. If you'd like to sponsor these videos, like Autofix has, let us know, shoot us an email. Now, Autofix, they make scan, scan tools. I carry this in the 200 series. Basically, if I get a fault out there in the bush, I'm able to scan the ECU, find out what the fault is, clear the codes, and I, it may even be able to help me diagnose the problem so I can fix the problem out there on the trail. So something like this from Autofix is a really worthwhile tool having in your kit. All right, let's see from the dash cam footage again, and I'm just gonna walk through this and we're gonna make some comments as we go. And oh my God. over she goes. That's sad seeing that really. What, so what's the first thing we can do? Well, the idea that you were going to be able to power up out of that was never going to work. There's nothing on that trail. If you look at the trail there, I'll move the mouse pointer. You look at this area here, there's no, no way for the tires to travel up out of that rut. The rut is like a railway track and it just says we're going straight ahead. The moment you put momentum into it, the back end of the car is pushing forward. The front end of the car, even though the wheels are turned, they're basically going to train track forward. As you know, energy, when it's traveling in a direction, it doesn't want to change directions. So because we're on a slippery surface, that's fighting us every step of the way. That's where momentum is not what you want in this situation. So there's two things that I think you could do in this situation. And, and I'd be interested to hear from you in the comments down below what you think we could do in this situation. The first thing is, on the bottom right hand tyre, where the inside was, dig a small trench to lead the tyre up out of the rut. That would be the first thing you could try. Now I'm not talking needing to dig a great trench, just dig a small lead, if you will, that'll lead the tire up out, out of that trench. Let me show you with the, the pointer. So basically in this area here, you would dig about that distance. What's that? 300 millimeters, 30 centimeters, a bit of a trench. And then the tire can get into that trench and be steered the direction you want it to go. And now how do you drive that? Well, you're going to do it very slowly very slowly and try and just see that the vehicle travels up there. The second thing you could do there to assist you as well is use some of those logs that are there down in the trench to again try and assist the vehicle to get up out of that rut. But all of this is done really slow, it's crawling speed, it's the tiniest amounts of things. Now I'm making all of these comments assuming that we've already aired our tyres down and we've, we could even air the tyres down a bit further to get out of this situation. The second idea that I've got that could work here is you've got a tree right there beside the track so and and there's trees all around so if the vehicle's got a winch on it use the winch to just pull you up out of the rut you could if if you don't have a winch get your your recovery strap your your snatch strap whatever sort of straps you've got run them to the tree and then with the vehicle that's behind you, hook to the vehicle behind you, run it past the tree through, in an ideal world, through a tree trunk protector or something like that, to the front of the vehicle. And then use that to hold the front of the vehicle up as you drive forward. And just gently work the two vehicles together to bring the, the vehicle up onto the, the high surface that you want to travel on. So that's two ideas I've got that could work in this situation, but let us know what ideas you've got. All right, let's keep rolling this. 
So everybody's trying to work out what do we do now? How do we get Emma out of the car? Everything looks safe to me. Like the car's not gonna roll any further. I'm sure Emma's probably a bit shook up and we can understand why everybody's a little bit concerned. Okay, is the vehicle going to roll any further? That's a, the question you wanna be asking as well. It's not. Okay, right there. I'm as guilty as the next person in this situation of, of panicking effectively. And we've just seen this gentleman here, he's jumping back and forth across this rut, slippery surface, and he slips over. Now he was fine, but I'll just play it again and watch his head. Imagine if he'd fully head smacked the top of that roof rack uh, or the back of the canopy there, and knocked himself out. We've now taken a situation that was under control, not ideal, but under control and it is what it is. Now we've got an, a, an injured person. So now we've got a real situation on our hands. We've just lost one of the people that can help us recover the vehicle because they're injured. We've now got to prioritize who is going to require greater care. Is it, um, is it Emma or is it old mate who's just knocked himself out on the back of the car? Um, you know, this is a hyper, hypothetical situation. Obviously the gentleman who's been knocked out on the back of the car is the priority. So Emma, you're just gonna stay in the car unless you can get yourself out. We gotta deal with this. What's that gonna involve? How far from town are you? What sort of first aid experience and equipment do you have with you? Can a, can a helicopter get in there? An ambulance get in there? Can you get medical care that you need? What, what all goes on? If it's a bad injury, it's like, Emma, you're just gonna have to stay here. We've gotta get old mate back to town and you leave it like start unpacking that a, a whole heap and all of a sudden what was a really you know real, uh, an inconvenience but a, a manageable situation is now a very dangerous and unmanageable situation so my takeaway from this is when we're in these stressful situations always just slow down a bit and take the time to think through you know just just walk carefully take intentional steps hang on to something as you walk past the car don't be running around tripping over things and getting damaged any, any further if you're getting value out of this video make sure you smash that like button hit the subscribe button because uh, we've got a heap of these style of reacts videos where it's all about what can we learn from this situation when something bad goes on you know it, Let's try and draw the positives out of it and learn from it. I'm not about bagging people out. I'm not interested in doing that. I'm interested in learning. How can we learn from it? Now we've got a whole playlist on the YouTube channel where we've just piled all these videos into that playlist so that you can just learn from it and really, you know, let's unpack it and see what's going on. If you've got a video that you'd like me to react to, Make sure you inbox it to me, madmat at madmat4wd.com.au. And if it's up for it, I'd love to check it out and see what we can all learn from that video. Anyway, I love the fact that even after this wild adventure, <laughs> Emma's still going out with, uh, with this guy and they're, you know, they're, they're doing life together. What a great story. I'm, I'm glad at the end of the day, it was just a big adventure and a car got damaged. That's, that's pretty, pretty okay, you know, like we've all been there. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.